Hey friends, welcome back to Huga House. Today's video is a clean with me and a bonus strawberry jam tutorial. And I hope that you enjoy this video. I've included some clips of our recent trip to the strawberry patch where we hand pick the strawberries I'm using to make the strawberry jam. So stay tuned until the end of the video if you would like to see the strawberry jam tutorial. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment down below. I love reading your comments. So um, let's get right into this video. I think I'll try this a new way. I'm gonna show you the tricks that I know. I'm getting tired of talking. And I need more of a show right now. It's time that you made your mind up. Cause lately all it ever does is change. Feels like we're only talking, talking. Going round and around. Like no other every day Talking, talking, going round and around, back around. I will fight like no other every day. I won't stop like the others. I will stay. Cause now is the right time. And I'm feeling alright. I'm playing your game like I know I can win right now.
So what you can see that I'm doing here is just taking out the canning jars that I bought from the grocery store. Uh, I am using eight ounce jelly jars and you want to sanitize the jelly jars before you make your jam. And you can do that if you have a sanitizing cycle on your dishwasher, which I do. So I just went ahead and ran them through the sanitizing cycle along with the other dishes that I had um, before I started making my jam. So while your jelly jars are sanitizing, you want to get your strawberries ready. And um, how you get your strawberries ready is to just wash them and then you take the tops off and you want to cut out the white part, which is called the hull, which is um, kind of underneath of the stem when you remove it. And it's really important to take this off because it does change the texture and flavor of your jam if you don't do that. So I strongly recommend that you take the time to do that even though it might seem like a pain or a waste of time. And for this recipe that I'm using, which I am going to link in the box below, it called for eight cups of strawberries. So I did that and then once you've got the eight cups of strawberries going, you want to just mash them up and you can either puree them if you want a really smooth consistency jam or if you don't mind the chunks you can just do it with like a potato masher and you are going to put your jam on the stove with a box of pectin which you can usually buy at a grocery store and um, this recipe calls for seven cups of sugar which might seem like a lot but you want your jam to be sweet and it also helps the pectin to uh, do its magic and make it into a jam and not just a syrup. Okay, so honestly I messed up my jam a little bit and I didn't follow the directions the way that I was supposed to, but I didn't want to re-record for you guys um, because it is a very long process to make jam. You are supposed to put the pectin in first before you put in your sugar and let the pectin come to a boil with the strawberry consistency um, and then you add your seven cups of sugar and boil it for another minute. So um, once you've done all the boiling, and you should definitely refer to the recipe I'm linking below, you put your jam in the jars and you will boil the jam jars in, um, it's called a water bath. And you wanna make sure that your jam jars have about two inches of water above them and you boil them for 10 minutes. The reason you do this is because this is how you get the preserve. It creates pressure in the jar so that it has like a vacuum seal so you could keep the jam like in your cellar or your pantry or whatever. And um, I'm just taking mine out with tongs because obviously the jars are very, very hot. And you'll actually want to flip them upside down to let the vacuum process happen. And the vacuum process can take up to 24 hours and you will hear a uh, like popping sound when it happens um, and you know I also want to add that things can go wrong with jam making it is somewhat of a complicated process sometimes the jars don't pop and seal right and if that happens you can just keep them in your refrigerator uh, my jam was a little too thin for my liking but you can either redo the process or you can just use it as pancake syrup or pie filling whatever you'd like so i hope you enjoyed this video and please don't forget to subscribe like and comment down below and i will see you next time bye